support maybe white supremacists, maybe some other radical groups. But we're here to voice our strong, very strong indignation at what took place in Congress and the cover-up as a result. And you may have seen that just over the weekend, Chelsea Clinton. Chelsea Clinton was surrounded by a group of, of young students. I think it was at New York University. And basically, they tried to pin what took place in New Zealand and New Zealand, let's say, right here, was an awful atrocity. And they tried to uh, pin what took place in New Zealand on Chelsea Clinton because she was too outspoken on anti-Semitism, which she was, and we appreciate that. And they blamed her rhetoric on the murder of, of uh, the innocents in New Zealand. Louder! So after this resolution passed, the, the, the Jewish people continued to suffer. But all the other isms that were involved got a tailwind from this. And they're feeling their muscles. And they're flexing their muscles. And they are, we are suffering and they're not. Janine Pereira, Judge Janine, was removed, at least temporarily suspended from her show because she made something which was uh, an anti-Muslim remark. She was suspended immediately by Fox. And meanwhile, Omar, Ms. Omar and Talay continue to move on with impunity. And that's why we are calling upon the Congress to do what it has to do. And the Senate stands alone, and it must be addressed alone, not to be confused with other forms of hatred. As bad as they are, we're here addressing anti-Semitism. That's why we are here today. And I will have other remarks, but I'm gonna to to make it brief so that others can speak. Just wanna close with this one thought. And that is, nobody suffered from hatred like the Jewish people. And because we suffered as a minority, therefore we were all the more compassionate to others. We were merciful to others. The Jewish people are responsible for, to a large extent for bringing in Muslims into this country. Hayas deals with a disproportionate amount of Muslims bringing them in here. Why? Because we have compassion for other minorities. We feel their pain. And the least we can expect is that we have a member of that minority to feel a little pain for us too. And don't make your anti-Semitic remarks. Don't laugh in our face. Don't sign that resolution with glee because you know you just got off the hook. Come around, say you generally are, are sorry, or get off that foreign relations committee. And yeah. that's our ask today. Democrats and vote. Make sure you vote. I That's the only I way to I your voice will be heard. I want Republican. 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 A very close friend of the Jewish people. Someone who had the courage to go against Obama on the Iran deal. I want to introduce our great friend, Grace Mang. Committee. He doesn't deserve to be there. Mr. Goss, give me two minutes. I want to appreciate it. 
Thank you everyone. Good morning. Thank you all for being here for this important rally. Thank you to our leaders, Cynthia Zaliski, Rabbi Schoenfeld, and all the co-sponsoring organizations who made today's event possible. I'm glad we are standing united and strong and clean. This is not a partisan issue. We are here as Democrats, as Republicans, as Jews, as non-Jews, to stand against anti-Semitism. for that kind introduction and for all that you do for Queens. I want to begin by wishing all of you a hot Sameach as we begin to celebrate Purim. Oh, wow. No service here. <laughs> this has been a tough few weeks for our community. I know it. I know it because you've called our office, because you've emailed, we've had conversations on the phone, and we've received letters. And I wanna say, I really appreciate the feedback always, good and bad. I know that our community has felt a lot of anger, a lot of hurt, and a lot of grief. And I know that this was in large part due to a comment made by a colleague of mine, Representative Omar. Several, <laughs> several comments. More than one. She should resign. As someone. Get her off the Foreign Relations Committee. If I could finish my two minutes, I would really appreciate it. Yeah. Not enough pressure. Shut up. Shut up. Why don't you get off the plaza? As someone who, shut up, as recent as my own congressional campaign has faced claims and accusations of dual loyalty, I know how deeply hurtful and dangerous those kind of accusations can be. I have and will continue to call out hatred, whether it's in the halls of Congress or anyone in politics as I see it. The threat of anti-Semitism is real and rising, and we know this here in Queens and in New York City. Hate crimes motivated by anti-Semitism have reached their highest rates in the last two decades, highest rates. Yet, I know that many of you feel that in this country, in New York, and even right here in Queens, not enough is being done. I, along with many others before, have said that anti-Semitism is especially dangerous because for centuries, Jews have served as canaries in the coal mine, often the first, but still never the last community to be persecuted. And while this sentiment remains true, it struck me this week that this analogy misses the point. It diminishes the violation that a Hasidic man feels when he is attacked in his own neighborhood for his perceived religious beliefs. It overlooks the intimidation and adrenaline that rushes through a congregant when they arrive at their synagogue on Shabbat and see that it has been defaced with a swastika. Or when a parent arrives at school to see Hail Hitler scribbled on their children's playground. And it ignores the reverberation that ran through the Jewish community and all communities when 11 members of the Tree of Life Synagogue were murdered just for worshiping and for being Jewish. Anti-Semitism is not just reprehensible because it portends danger for other communities, it is reprehensible on its own merits. to you here today that as a U.S. member of Congress, I will continue to work with you and I will continue to fight to ensure that our laws are designed to protect the most vulnerable amongst us. And many are right here in our community in Queens. It is for this reason that I have consistently advocated for increased amounts of money for our Homeland Security Grants 
which literally go towards ensuring the protection of our houses of worship here in Queens, New York City, and around the country, and to pro protect religious organizers from those who seek to harm them. And I will continue to fight for that highest amount. I will also continue to work to strengthen the FBI's approach to hate crimes. I also want to acknowledge the two <coughs> rockets that were fired into Israel from Gaza over the past few mm -hmm. And this activation of the Iron Dome was yet another sober reminder of the importance of the U.S. Israel bilateral, bipartisan assistance. than others. But that does not change the fact that the U.S.-Israel relationship and partnership will continue to be strong and we will not allow others to play political football with this important issue, which protects our loved ones in Israel and it protects the American democracy right here in New York. Crimes motivated by anti-Semitism are not one-off incidents. They have a cumulative and chilling effect on our community. I am grateful to all of you for organizing this important event today. And this is not just one day. We will continue to stand up and fight against anti-Semitism. Thank you. Introduction, our great, great borough president, Melinda Katz. Good afternoon. Thank you for allowing me to cut the line, as they say. It is a very busy day here in Queens. I want to thank Rabbi Schoenfeld, Shimmy Pelman, our Democratic district leader, and all the elected that come together every single time Israel needs it, and every single time that it is under attack. I'm standing there with Councilman, uh, former Councilman Jimmy Gennaro, and I said to him, isn't this where we did the rallies during the Intifada so many years ago? And it is amazing to me as someone who's been in elected office uh, with some reprieves in the middle uh, for 25 years, how many times that we have stood together on the steps of a synagogue, on the steps of the QJCC, on the steps of the library to make sure that the world hears us, to make sure that we are united, to make sure that when anti-Semitic acts are happening anywhere in the world, that people know that it affects all the Jewish community in the, in the world around. But it doesn't only affect the Jewish community. It affects every community. We have 190 languages, 200 countries here in the United States of America. Today, right now, I am here at this rally to show that Queens is united against anti-Semitism. At 2.30, there, are, there is a rally on the steps of Borough Hall in memory of the 49 people, I think it's now 50, who have been killed just because they went to pray in a mosque in New Zealand. And when it happens to one of us, it happens to all of us. And so I am so proud of the many times that we've gotten together and that we have stood up for our ally that is in the Middle East. And again, it's not just about the fact that they're allies because they are but it's also about fairness and equity and standing up when terrible things happen around the world. Stop so this. we can yell and we can yell at each other and we can yell out the things we want and the things that we think should happen in order to get fairness and equity. But at the end of the day, the world needs to see that we stand together against anti-Semitism and we stand together in support of the state of Israel. Talk, so, talk, 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 get rid of Omar. Rabbi the Jewish Center, that's right behind you. That's a, 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 it's an icon in the neighborhood. Rabbi Birnbaum was an officer of the New York Board of Rabbis, formerly an um, assistant executive director, am I correct? And I asked Rabbi Birnbaum to say a few remarks at this point. You know, there's an old Jewish joke. Before I speak, I'll let me say a few words. Uh, I bring you greetings from Rabbi.
Rabbi Joseph Potasnik, who is the Executive Vice President of the New York Board of Rabbis and the Chaplain for the Fire Department of New York. He would have been here, but he has to attend a memorial service for a fireman uh, as part of his duties as chaplain for FDNY. But he sent a message that we were discussing something that I thought you might be interested in this. He said if Haman was alive today, if Haman was alive today, Nancy Pelosi would say he's an unintentional anti-Semite. Yeah. I know some people have been yelling out, I'm going to give you some red meat, so listen and don't interrupt. But let me say this, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, anyone who is decent and has courage knows that this issue is nonpartisan. We have here, standing beside me, the longest serving city councilman. He set the record. As long as there's term limits, no one will beat him. 30 years, ran on a post, Morton Pavman. And where is his wife, Sandy? Sandy, raise your hand. There you are. Come on up. She is a Democratic state committee woman. And we have Republicans here. Right, you're a Republican, aren't you? <laughs> and we have independents here. We're okay. here, Rabbi. We're Joking here. Okay. Is here. They put us in the back, and but we we're here. People, by the way, we have people I saw, Professor Asher Matathias, who's a professor at, at St. John's. He brought people from the five towns. We have people here uh, from Great Neck that came with Jeff Weisenfeld. This, uh, and I'm sure if we had had more uh, publicity, uh, if we had more time, we would have had instead of, what do we have here? A thousand people, 500, 1,000 people? We would have had 10,000 people. All right, I think the police estimates said 10,000, right? <laughs> now, uh, Rabbi Schoenfeld cited the Megillah. I want to read you something from the Megillah. If you recall the story, the, uh, before there were Jewish defense agencies, there was Mordechai. He kept his finger on what was happening in the court of Ahasuerus. And he saved Ahasuerus from assassination. Okay, and he also... Oh, and, he sa he, he, and he also knew the plan that Haman had hatched and what had to be done. So if you recall this story, if you recall this story, he sent a message to Esther in the harem and said, you got to do something. What did she say? Well, you know, I haven't been called to the king. And if you're not called to the king and you show up and he doesn't extend the golden scepter, you could be killed. What did he say? So she, she got scared. She got scared. But what did Mordechai say to stiffen her resolve? For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then will relief and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house will perish. And who knoweth whether thou art not come to royal estate for just such a time as this? And I say to all the Jewish members of Congress who did not speak out, People look at you, yeah. and they, they say, if the Jews are not going to stand up for Jewish rights, who will? Who will? And my final remark is this. Of all the people who have risen to high political estate, we have a senior senator from this state. And I ask you, and I ask you to join me in the question, where's Chuck? Where's, where's Chuck? Chuck? Where's Chuck? Where's Chuck? Where's Chuck? Where's Chuck? Where's Chuck? Chuck, 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 Chuck. He's practicing Shmiras Halasha. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Councilman Rory Lansman. Good afternoon, everyone. Who are you? I'm Councilman Rory Lansman. Thank you. Welcome to the 24th Council District. I'm here to say we will not be silent. We will not be quiet. And sometimes we will even not be polite. Finally! We're not, we were not silent when the Queen's Museum 
tried to deny us the remembrance of the uh, establishment of the State of Israel. We were not quiet when we kicked out Kuwait Airways from our airports because they wouldn't give tickets to people with Israeli passports. We were not quiet when we got our fair share of city funding to protect our institutions. We are Jews, we are proud, we are Americans, and we demand the same justice, the same protection, the same commitment of every other American that every other American enjoys in this country. That's right. When we say and when we see that anti-Semitism is on the rise, what does that mean? It means a Bukharian teenager getting attacked on 108th Street and sent to the hospital. It means Jews in Brooklyn being physically attacked on their way to shul. It means shuls being defaced mm -hmm. with anti-Semitic graffiti. It means when we go to shul in our community, we pass by armed guards that we have to pay for out of our own resources to protect us. Our strength as a community has always been our positivity our belief in ourselves and our willingness to reach out to other people and build alliances and relationships and to find common ground. That is the answer to the troubles and struggles that we are experiencing today, which brothers and sisters, let's be honest, thank God, pale in comparison to the generations before us. So let us keep our focus on building our community, on being strong and proud and unashamed and unquiet Jews. Let us not attack fellow Jewish legislators who stand up consistently for the state of Israel and for the Jewish people. Let us not give in to that temptation to turn on each other we are a strong and proud people. Our brothers and sisters in Israel have built a state that all of us are not just proud of, but we marvel at. So let's stand together united, Orthodox and not, Ashkenazi, Sephardim, and with our non-Jewish friends and ensure the safety and security and prosperity of the Jewish People. You gotta get rid of and, Omar for that! Stand together in clear <laughs> condemnation of Omar! Get rid of Chuck! Of the local okay. Republican committee. Oh, Rabbi Marcus, the president, is here as well. Uh, I see Joe is here, and uh, Joe Paul Hannon, correct? Yep. Okay. Cock Hannon, sorry. Cock Hannon, Joe! Hey, Joe! Here. We want to welcome them. Go, uh, at this time, um, yeah, we're going to hear later from the ZOA, the Zionist Organization of America. Right here. The treasurer. Who's here? Phil I said Phil. I saw Phil. Right. Uh, and I uh, want to welcome the treasurer of the World uh, Zionist Organization. I'm sorry, World Jewish Congress. Uh, Jeffrey, I just know you as Jeffrey Wiesenthal because he's one of the greatest outspoken people that we have in our midst. So Jeffrey, take it away. It is absolutely true that bipartisan support is essential in the United States to assist in the continued survival of the state of Israel. That's a truism. Right. It's a truth. We know that. And we have great elected officials who represent us in this area in particular. This is where I have no qualm with anybody, none whatsoever. But when Rory spoke just now about justice for the Jewish people, we have to understand what that means precisely. It means that we have to be treated by the body politic the same way any other minority group would be respected. Just because we're more polite doesn't mean we should be ignored. Woohoo! What happened, let's be very honest with each other. We're amongst family. What happened in New Zealand is an atrocity against innocent people. Now, our sages tell us, because some people would say, 
Let's be honest with each other. We don't know how they feel about us. But our sages tell us that we assume the goodness of every human being until and unless proven otherwise. Like Omar. Ilan Omar has proven otherwise. Yes. I recall my wife and I years ago attended a simcha at Parki Synagogue where Rabbi Arthur spoke about the Parsha and his message that day made no sense to me. He says, but remember, the Parsha reminds us, he said, that in all of our centuries in the diaspora, wherever we went, and we did have occasionally some good periods of time in different parts of the diaspora, but what we learned from our history is that it never lasts forever. God forbid it should end in this country. There is a pattern that we must recognize. This didn't start yesterday. It started 30 years ago with people who have said terrible things about us who are in public life. We saw terrible things at political conventions. We see Congress members who take secret pictures and a former president with Louis Farrakhan. What would happen if a, an American not of that persuasion took pictures with David Duke, secret or otherwise? Would that be acceptable to the public? No. No. Why should we Jews be treated any differently? It's not appropriate. It's outrageous. And at the time last month of the burial of an American musical icon, another former president sits on the dais with Louis Farrakhan. It's not acceptable. And another member of Congress, another member of Congress, two years ago sat on a dais with Louis Farrakhan in honor of President Rouhani, who with his religious leaders plot genocide against the Jewish people. Very appropriate to mention that today, three days before Purim. What we are saying is we want to be treated like everybody else. You respect us. This was an issue about anti-Semitism. You don't create a kitchen sink re resolution, which means nothing. It's a shame 28 some odd members of the United States Congress couldn't get together and be a stronger force than three racists, three racists who now dominate the media in Congress. They should dominate. We have 28 Jewish members of Congress. We have a Jewish United States Senator. Yes, they represent us well. But they won't go the extra mile to say we want to be treated like everybody else. We will not be slighted. We will not be insulted. Because let's be honest, we know the truth. No matter what happens, the majority of Jews are going to be Democrats. Okay, it's a given. We know it. They're still voting for FDR. We understand. We understand. Wake up. Not a given. But you not must a given. demand to be treated and your support must be reciprocated. Now, I want to read to you a letter. <clears throat> Some of you may know Mayor Ed Koch, who was a great Jew, someone I admired, who was a mentor to me. I don't know how many of you have ever seen, you can see it online, Mayor Koch's tombstone. What Mayor Koch wrote on his tombstone, aside from the Shema prayer, on Ed Koch's tombstone, he wrote, I am a Jew, my mother was a Jew, my father was a Jew. Those were the last words, and he writes it on his tombstone, last words of Daniel Pearl as he was beheaded by an Islamic terrorist. He wanted to send a message about terrorism. And so I read to you a letter from Dr. Judah Pearl, the father of Daniel Pearl. Brief excerpt. As president of the Daniel Pearl Foundation and a lifelong Democrat, I urge Speaker Nancy Pelosi to act boldly and decisively on Representative Ilan Omar's anti-Semitic bigotry. Our late son Daniel Pearl was not an Islamophobe. He was not a foreign agent. 
nor was he a traitor in Benjamin's. Yeah. Yeah. He was a principled American journalist, a champion of truth, and a relentless peace seeker who was murdered for being a Jew mm -hmm. and a lover of Israel. I plead with Speaker Pelosi to rid the House of Representatives of this new form of bigotry directed yeah. against Jews and lovers of Israel. by Representative Ilan Omar will continue to haunt and poison the future of American Jewry. However, we are concerned not merely with the harsh consequences of those words, but with the obsessive hatred which produced them. The ultimate purpose for which they have been enunciated to erode American support for the State of Israel, the miracle which symbolizes Jewish history and Jewish aspirations. That's all we want to be treated like everyone else. Okay, uh, just a word from the publisher of the Queen's Choice Link, one of our sponsors, a very brief word and an important message at the end. Following um, Yaakov Searle, we'll be hearing from a representative of the ZOA, we'll introduce him to both of you. Uh, it's tough to follow Jeff. Great. I just, wa I just want to thank everybody who came here today. I want to thank everybody who came here today. And I want you all to know that a few years ago, as uh, Rory Landsman just mentioned, we had a problem with the Flushing Meadow Park. And uh, Danny Danone wanted to use Flushing Meadow Park for um, a celebration of a, a celebration of the 70th anniversary of, of the Declaration of Israel, which took place at the UN, which was situated in Flushing Meadow Park 70 years ago. And he was rebuked by the he, he was rebuked by the um, who, whoever was managing that building and told him he could not use the building. We got together. I found that we the Queens originally found that early in the morning. By 11 a.m., all of our elected officials, rabbis, and community activists did a job. By 11 a.m., the whole event was reinstated. So what I want to say to all of you today, today the Queens community is powerful. Now, with God's help, you can do what needs to be done. I, I printed out Nancy Pelosi's number. We want to get a million phone calls to Nancy Pelosi. It won't that, help. Uh, that Omar should be the only person that can take Omar off this committee. So it, uh, there is no reason why we can't do it. And her number, if you want to take it down on your phone, it's 202 225. <laughs> Take out your phone. I'm going to give everybody this paper. You pass it around. Take a picture with your telephone. You can find it online. Okay, everybody's going to get a copy. Try getting through. Pass it around. And, and call the number as soon as you can. Cornish Telfin. Two o two. Thank you. I'm going to repeat the number. Two two five. Again, the number is 202 225 4965. Uh, and uh, thank you, Yaakov and his Queen's Jewish Link. Uh, you have a great rabbinic uh, advisor, that I know. But you do a great work for the entire Bessie's around, please. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Phil Schwartz, if you're using his head. <laughs> Uh, for all for a good purpose. Right now. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, there is a congressman here who's just been made a, a um, aware of that. So we got to do follow respect and protocol. I uh, state Congressman uh, Greg Meeks, who represents much of the Jamaica State. Anybody want uh, Pelosi's number? Uh, I'm Paul Rockaway. Uh, he has been shown a great friendship um, to the uh, Israel and its cause. Following that, we'll get to the ZOA. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You can find it online.
Anti-Semitism is real. Recent reports show that anti-Semitism has increased in the United States of America by over 60%. 2,000 cases reported in 2017 alone. We cannot be quiet. We could not allow anti-Semitism to rear its ugly head anywhere, and we have to speak out against it. Please speak out. So, Why did you sit with Farrakhan? Yes, let's do that. So, I have stood up and spoken out. I have asked my colleague, I said that the words that she used were harmful and hurt, and she should apologize for them. Step down, not apologize. Step out of the Senate down. Relations yeah. Committee. That you can take yeah. care of. What I said. about getting rid of her. And then the talk basics. to a number of my colleagues. I sat down with a number of my Jewish colleagues in Congress <laughs> and had some deep conversations we talked about our experiences with one. She told me of the hateful times when she first went to college and what was said of her just because she was Jewish. It reminded me of experiences that I've had. And we sat down and we talked about it. And we said we know that we have differences, but we have the same pains when someone speaks out and is anti-Semite or racist. And that we, as I did yesterday, when I was speaking at a synagogue, and we were talking back and forth, having a dialogue, we know that we've got to speak up. I came here today as a result of just that. Dr. King said that we will not perish because of the acts of bad people, but the acts of good people who did not speak out. That's the reason why I'm here today. I'm here. Because I will not sit back and speak and sit without speaking out when I hear bad and evil and anti-Semitism is something that we've got to wipe off the planet of the earth. Yeah. 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 How would you react if an African American child were killed? You wouldn't be talking. You'd be acting. This time, you know, one of the our sponsoring uh, organizations is the Zionist Organization of America, headed by uh, Borden Klein. I, I, if somebody wants to correct me, please do. It is the only Jewish established mainstream organization that speaks out and firmly, and certainly on this issue, they have. Mort um, was, you listen to it was too hard for him to come. He very much wanted to come, Mort. So we have a very able representative from the ZOA, Dr. Arthur Cook from Englewood. He is a vice president of the ZOA. It's my pleasure to ask you to say a few words. Well, thank you. The uh, board felt very proud. The ZOA is organizing this event. The board is, and the ZOA is the oldest Zionist organization in America, and it is always in the forefront of calling out anti-Semitism, no holds barred, it's straight talk. 
It's not a matter of the right or the left. It's simply a matter of speaking the truth. Yesterday, Jews around the world read from the first section of the, of the book of Ayikra, Leviticus. And we were told that if a person is witness to events and they have ability to testify as to the veracity of those events, they have a moral obligation to speak up. To stay go. quiet is not an option. We are ethically and morally responsible to speak up and say the truth. Truth and justice. Truth and justice are fatally compromised by a failure to come forward and render testimony. Speak to the truth. Today we are at a crossroads, an unthinkable crossroads in America. The Jewish community is under attack in ways once believed to be unimaginable. Politicians and prominent media outlets are either attacking us or standing aside, unwilling to confront the rising tide of anti-Semitism in America. A few days ago on CNN, Paul Begala actually called Jared and Ivanka Kushner cockroaches. Oh. That type of term could be reserved for Nazi Germany. To call Sorry. Jews cockroaches is a simple step towards the dehumanization of our people. It is unacceptable and will never be allowed. What's happening? There's a famous public man for the description of anti-Semitism. Someone who hates Jews more than is entirely necessary. Representatives Ivan Omar and Rashida Saeed are prima facie examples that is you the evil doings of Israel. The U.S. support is all about the Benjamins. She equates us with being having dual loyalty. This canard has been raised against our people for centuries. And each time it has horrible results, resulting in the death to the Jewish people. At a swearing-in ceremony, Tla'i was joined by Linda Sarsour. An avowed Jew hater and supporter of BNS, via BDS. While these yes. congressmen yes. know that their views will not win the day now, perhaps there is much more insidious action taking place now. By their actions and the and the totally in, improper quiet surrounding them, they are lowering the bar of public discussion. It's called the Overton window. You allow once what was utterly repulsive and repugnant to become part of polite society. We are joined here together for one purpose. That will never happen. Anti-Semitism is repulsive and repugnant. It must remain so in the public sphere. Extinguish anti-Semitism from the U.S. Congress. Years ago, William F. Buckley, the founder of National Review and the founder of Conservative America, dealt with these issues in the most forthright way possible. He is an example as to how these issues should be dealt with today. The John Birch Society was prominent in the Republican Party. Buckley said they're anti-Semites. The repulsive, the repugnant, he threw them out. They never showed their face again. Years Throw later, out Omar! It's a harbinger of what we see today. Pat Buchanan and Joseph Sobrin, who were protégés of Buckley and his close associates, wrote articles in the 80s talking about the ills and the evils of Israel. Buckley saw behind the lines. He was keen to the obvious. Attacking Israel and Zionism was simply a ruse to shield them from the over, from, to shield their over anti-Semitism and hatred of the Jewish people. He threw them out of National Review. He would not allow them to be associated in any way. And Mr. Buckley wrote a book called On Anti-Semitism. <laughs> On my trips to Washington with both NORPAC and of course the ZOA, I give this book to every representative that I meet. Buckley had a simple cheshbon, a simple accounting. If you hold Israel to a double standard, you are an anti-Semite. Okay. Omar, 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 Omar talks about Venezuela. She thinks it's a U.S. plot that's going on against the country. Here is an evil country 
Babies can't get medicines in hospital. There's no food for anybody. The, uh, there's no rights now, and yet she's making excuses for them. Tai, on her, on her induction, not only had Linda Sarsour there, but she wrapped herself in the flag of the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Authority is evil. They pay oh, people to murder Jews. Know that. It is obvious that the canard that they raise against the Jewish people is absolutely a vicious double standard, a clear example of it. Their hatred for Jews is disguised in, a, in, in, in polite pronouncements against Israel, and they expect us to buy it. It won't happen. Buses to Washington, or this doesn't end. Nancy Pelosi's original intent was actually proper. She wanted to reflect anti-Semitism and anti-Semitism only. She was waylaid and sidetracked by attacks upon her, and we must recognize that. Today, as many people have said, it's our, it's our mission to relay that there is one, accept, one acceptable outcome of this only. Anti-Semitism is a disgrace and is repugnant in itself. It is not to be put on with other isms. We are now only concerned on this issue and with anti-Semitism. The speaker must act. Omar and Tlaib must be personally excoriated and, and set out, and they must take it off their committees and have no power. Yep. Out, 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 out. In any way. And finally, and when they're out, let's meet here again and celebrate. Amen. 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 Let us resolve, always, that we will never tolerate anti-Semitism in any form. It is repulsive. It is not. People say it's hurtful. It's not. The same people who use the canards that the Gala used, it's all to dehumanize us and set the stage for what happened, perhaps, in all instances when Jews were persecuted and murdered. First, they seek to dehumanize us and then they come after us. And as a uh, philosopher said at the end of World War II, first they came for the communists, then they came for the gypsies, then they came for the Jews, and in your silence, and by allowing it, you're setting the stage for them to come to you. I'm Yisrael Chai. It's our pleasure to introduce our city council person, the person that cares, I think, about us the most. The person who's always been with us, always, Karen Kostowitz. Thank you, Cynthia. You know, my grandfather was killed in Poland because he was Jewish. Not only because he was Jewish. They came to his house and took him away from his family and killed him just because he was Jewish. This was before the Holocaust. It happened in 1923. I grew up in a home where there was a lot of fear from my mother who witnessed this entire episode. And it just sits with me. I remember when it was thunder or lightning she would take me into the closet because it reminded her of God. It was the Kazakhs. They left in the middle of the night and came to New York. If they did not come to New York, if that incident didn't happen, they would be dead from the Holocaust because they left. My grandfather was gone. About five weeks ago, I got an anti-Semitic letter addressed to me at 250 Broadway, my city council office. And I don't have one, so I can't yell at him. But anyway, it was terrifying to me. I took it to the police, talked about the Jews, talked about me, of how I helped the Jews, especially Bulharian Jews. The police still have it. It's not a hate crime because he did not threaten me. 
Well, since then, I've gotten two emails addressed to my email uh, address. This has to stop. About a week and a half ago, I was I got a call from the 112th precinct telling me that there are bad things all over the schoolyard of 139 on 63rd. As I was walking out my door, I opened the door and Toby Stavisky was there. And I said, come on, we're going to the school. They arrested the people. The whole schoolyard was filled with anti-Semitic drawings. Killed the Jews. They caught the four young men who did it. And their, their story now is they didn't know that it was anti-Semitic. Come on, give me a break. This has to stop, and we are the people that have to do it. We are. That's right. On behalf of my grandfather and all the others, and the six million Jews that were killed only because they were Jewish, we have to be here and fight for our justice. And that's to get I have to say. So Squirrel Jomar! <laughs> Mr. Meeks, Farrakhan called the Jews cockroaches. What? Shut up! 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 I, you, you keep it short, I'll keep it short and sharp. So, uh, thank you very much. It's our pleasure to introduce our assembly. Okay, wait, what the speaker there? Anti-Semitism is not new. We all know that. Thousands and thousands. As long as there have been Jews, there have been anti-Semites. Just this past Shabbat, uh, in Shul, what did we read? We read Amalek. We read that beware of Amalek and never forget, do not forget that they're out to destroy you and kill you everywhere you go. There are a lot of Amaleks uh, throughout our history, but it's so important that we all come together uh, whenever anti-Semitism rears its ugly head. And together we have strength by speaking out. And as was pointed out by many of the Wonderful. speakers, uh, we cannot be silent. Uh, we have to speak out. Uh, we have to uh, fight uh, bigotry wherever it arises. But uh, in today in particular, uh, as Jews and uh, friends of the Jewish community and friends of Israel, uh, we are here addressing anti-Semitism. It is very appropriate. It's on the eve of Purim, where we knew uh, one of those uh, descendants of Amalek, uh, Haman uh, was out to uh, destroy the Jewish people. We'll do that soon, Wednesday night. Um, but it's nothing new. We all know that. And uh, it's, 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 it's real upsetting that we have such an increase uh, recorded of anti-Semitic incidents uh, in the United States uh, recently uh, and right here in New York recently. And a number of people pointed it out. The uh, Jews that were assaulted in Brooklyn, this Bukharian young man that was assaulted on 108th Street, uh, so many, so many other incidents, swastikas all over the place. So again, uh, the message should be, we cannot be silent, we have to come together, we have to speak out whenever anti-Semitism rears its ugly head. I'm Yisrael Chai. <laughs> I like the theme of today's rally. We're here to stand up and speak out. And we're standing up and speaking out against all of those incidents of hate, especially anti-Semitism. Whether it be on 108th Street, 
or in Crown Heights or in Bushwick where a brick was thrown through the Chabad window. I was taken with what the rabbi said. He said when they threw the brick, our door remains open. And I'm reminded of what our first president, George Washington, said in his letter to the Turo congregation. He said, give to bigotry no sanction. And if, they, and if that was said during our early days as a nation, it's certainly appropriate today. Uh, and as I look out and I, I see the Jewish war veterans caps, they have also been in the forefront of the fight. Not just against anti-Semitism, but for our country. And we appreciate your service. And it reminds me of, as a child, my father used to talk about his older brother, who was an amateur boxer. And Saturday nights during the Second World War, he and his friends would go up to 86th Street and 2nd Sec Avenue or Lexington Avenue and pick fights with the German-American Bund. Now, I'm not suggesting that that's the way to resolve it, but still, we spoke out and we stood up and we're going to continue to stand up and to speak out because it's what we are taught to do. Thank you. We are blessed with wonderful elected officials from Queens. There's something about this neighborhood, I guess. It's blessed. But it's kind of interesting to know that when someone who has, who has now retired from it has come back and is always with us. So it's my pleasure to introduce Jim Gennaro. Thank you, Cynthia. Honored Rabbanan dedicated community leaders, my good colleagues in government, dear members and friends of the Jewish community. We need to be here today. We have been here before. We will be here again. We will not be silent. We cannot be silent when anti-Semitism has become not only tolerated, but abided in the halls of the U.S. Congress. We're the most vile anti-Semitic, where the most vile anti-Semitic tropes go unchallenged. We as a community have not only the right, but the sacred obligation to challenge this filth, this stain on our nation, this monument to hate and intolerance. And I did not enter politics all those decades ago to see the American political system degrade into a refuge of appeasement and acceptance of anti-Semitism. <laughs> it is an abomination, and our voices must become a chorus of rectitude and righteousness so bright that the sin of anti-Semitism will have no safe harbor in our community, in our government, or in our politics. And this is not just about the worldwide Jewish community today or the state of Israel today. It is about generations yet unborn that we will never know. What price will they pay for being Jewish? What pangs will they suffer to worship God? How free will they be to live in the glory of Yiddishkeit and pass it down through the generations? And what will be the fate of the state of Israel? There has been a lot of vile talk recently about allegiance and, I'm, and how we have a misplaced allegiance. We don't need and we will not accept lectures about allegiance from an individual who has made peace with hate. Omar must go! And we have allegiance to 
of God, and according to the God of Abraham, Israel is the spiritual homeland of the Jews. That means something to us so powerful, it cannot be expressed in words. And if we could find words to express it, those whose allegiance is to hatred could never understand it. So let our words and our passion and our battle against anti-Semitism and hatred and intolerance of any kind go forth from this gathering and may it touch and illuminate the hearts of those oblivious to this cancer of anti-Semitism and inspire them to join us in our righteous mission. This is our hope. This is our prayer. And on behalf of the Catholic community, and all the Catholics and all the Christians to this country, for every Jew who stands up for the state of Israel, there are, I don't know how many conservative Christians who stand with you every day. As a Christian, stood before you and said everything he's gonna do to make the situation better. Thank you for being here today. Mr. Meese, if you do not excommunicate Farrakhan, then the black community is complicit in his filthy anti-Semitism. You have to excommunicate him and denounce him. If you don't do that, you're a fake. Thank you and good afternoon. I want to thank all our sponsors for arranging this. And all those who are here today, you know, we all should be somewhere else to join this beautiful Sunday, but we need to be here today. Because if we don't do anything, the haters, the anti-Semites win. And if we don't say anything, the haters win. But when we work together, when we join forces, we win. And we fight back the anti-Semitism, whether it be in Washington, whether it be in New York, whether it be in our own community, we win when we work together. You know, when you read it, that this year, hate crimes have increased 72%. And of that 72%, two-thirds are anti-Semitic crimes. We have to do something. We have to keep up the pressure in our schools with our law enforcement in our communities. And by working together, we can fight back anti-Semitism. She's working the floor. You know, you know, as noted by my green tie today, it's St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick was also a victim of a hate crime. He was enslaved because of his faith, but he used his faith as we all do to get us through hard times and to preach, not hatred, but that we should be all be working together to fight back that hate. I look forward to working with all of you as we fight back anti-Semitism in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you all for being here today. Let me thank the organizers of this rally who have not been thanked enough. Rabbi Schoenfeld, DOA, Queens Jewish Lake, Queens Jewish Community Council. I have a message for the anti-Semites out there. My voice carries a long way. We are not going away. We are here, and we are not going away. That's my simple message. Whether you're in the halls of Congress, Kicking some orthodox guy walking the streets of Crown Heights, or you're writing swastikas in schoolyards and forest hills, we are not going away. I want to thank my colleagues and gentlemen who are here today, most of whom are not Jews. People who had to leave, like Costa Costa Antonides, a great kid from Astoria, and Liz Crowley behind me, former councilwoman, and my Democratic leader here, Greg Meeks, and others who spoke, and you're going to hear from Donovan Richards as well. We have a message. Ms. Omar, you should have the same blessing that the Tsar has. May you be kept far away from us. Okay. My message to her. When the anti-Semites came to testify, when we held a, 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 a hearing on BDS and passed a resolution against it at City Hall and the City Council, I held up my cell phone when I asked them, do any of you have a cell phone? And they looked at me like I had two heads. And I said, you know, one of these is cell phones. 
because they know they can't live without Jewish and Israeli technology. Okay? They all got up and they all got up. I'm Israel High! I'm Israel High! Look at this crowd. We have a lot of friends. Most people in this country are of goodwill. They don't hate. They love their brothers and sisters as God commanded us. So our message today on the eve of Purim is we love one another and we will always stand up to hate and anti-Semitism. Thank you for being here. Pleasure to introduce Donovan Richards from City Council. Thank you. I'm Councilman Richards and I represent the Rockaways. And I'm proud to be here uh, today. And I wanted to be here because I want to send a very clear message to those who hate the people of Jewish ancestry, not only here but afar, that an attack on one of us is an attack on all of us. And let me also say this, for those who question whether the state of Israel should exist, we have a clear message to you, that the state of Israel will always exist and we will always fight in defense of the state of Israel. I am New York City Council Member Donovan Richards and I also have the blessing of chairing the Public Safety Committee, which gives me oversight over the New York City Police Department. Just a few weeks ago, we held a six-hour hearing on hate crimes in this city. And there was a question on, we should get past rhetoric. And we passed two key pieces of legislation out of my committee, which was sponsored by the Jewish Caucus, my, count, my colleague, Council Member Barry Gudinchik, Haim Deutsch, Mark Levine, and Karen, and that legislation, unfortunately, it's sad that we had to even create it, now has created the first office, I think in the United States, an office to prevent hate crimes. And the second thing the bill did was also, you just spoke about curriculum. It mandates that this office also gets into our schools and educates our young people on the Jewish people, on African American history. And the only way we're going to address this scourge of hate is to get to know each other better. We are more alike than we think. As an African American whose ancestors were enslaved and bought here and killed and murdered, we share that bond with the Jewish people. We shall never forget. This is why I'm here. We must stand together. Dr. King said it. We have to be our brothers and sisters keepers. And I'm proud to be here to stand with you. I will always stand with Israel. I've been to Israel. I got to see where those rockets land. And I am damn sure gonna stand with you all the way. Thank you, thank our you. Children and our community deserve to live in peace. God bless you all. Uh, I think it's not. I think it's burning out. Right. 
My name is Elizabeth Crowley. I'm a former New York City Council member from a district just a little west of here. I come here today as a friend to the Jewish people, a friend to Israel, and someone standing shoulder to shoulder with you to combat anti-Semitism. I want to thank Rabbi Schoenfeld and Cynthia Zaliski, the Jewish Community Council, the Jewish Link, all the organizations that put this rally here together today. I was a council member in, a, in an area that was mostly Christian. And it shocked me when I would go into my high schools and the kids did not know about the Holocaust. I sponsored after school programs so that my high school students could go to the Museum of Tolerance and to the Jewish Museum of the Holocaust Remembrance in Lower Manhattan. It is one small act of hate that could grow into somebody saying something and then hurting somebody and killing somebody to a genocide, to mass murder. We can never forget the atrocities of World War II and how Jewish people were persecuted before six million were killed during the World War II. We have to teach our children. We have to make sure that something like that never, ever happens to any people ever again. In conclusion, in, in conclusion, we're saying that one small act of hate can grow into much greater acts and that there's no tolerance, not here in Queens County, the most diverse place in the whole world where we know that our differences are our strengths, that whether we're Jewish, Christian, Muslim, or Hindu, wherever we worship, we should be safe, that our people are all children of God, and we are brothers and sisters, and that there's no space or no tolerance for any small acts of hate. And that if something happens in our communities, we should feel protected, and that the police should stand up and prosecute any hate crimes to the fullest extent of the law. I stand with you shoulder to shoulder, and we must stop this anti-Semitism because it is real and it is growing. Thank you. Thank you, Ramon. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you, Elizabeth. I present to you now David Steinberg of NORPAC with you. This is going to be followed by Rabbi Nisimov of the uh, representative of Bukhari and ABA, and Rabbi Mendelssohn of Forest Hills, and for that we're going to uh, Yes, I'm sorry, Brad, Rabbi, with, with, with the local hospital, Presbyterian Hospital. Iran's missile development, Iran's arming of Hezbollah, and Iran's support of terrorist militias threaten Israel. What are you going to do about it? Take it to light. The UN Human Rights Council has accused Israel of crimes against humanity because of the, they exercise the right of self-defense. What are you going to do about it? Hezbollah is positioning troops on the Syrian border with Israel. What are you going to do about it? And as you know, Hamas just fired rockets into Tel Aviv. What are you going to do about it? Finally, as has been mentioned frequently today, Representative Ilan Omar believes that the U.S. Congress 
only supports Israel because of the Benjamins. She believes that we are, are guilty of dual loyalty. She does not want you to go to Washington to talk to members of Congress about why Israel is so important. And that is why, that is why it is so important that each and every one of you join NORPAC on Monday, May 21st. We must educate the 120, the 120 new members of Congress about why Israel is so important. We must educate all the members of Congress about what is critical for the U.S.-Israel relationship. For 25 years, NORPAC has been taking a thousand Jews to Washington, a thousand people to Washington, Jews and non-Jews, to advocate for a strong U.S.-Israel relationship. Your coming makes a huge difference. This year, more than ever, I have cards. Please join. Please ask me, and we'll hand them out. There's some folks handing out cards. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. And now, um, as always, David. Now, Rabbi uh, Nisanov, Shlomo Nisanov, uh, who's very involved in the community in every which way. But here he's representing the Bukharian community. The ABA is correct. Bucharin. Thank you. As somebody who came from the former Soviet Union, I want to take on behalf of American Bukharian Alliance to say thank you to Queens, to say thank you to the American Jewish community saying, let our people go. I came here in 1980, a couple of blocks away in Dara Gardens, and we are here to stand together and give back to the community, because we're not going back to Uzbekistan, back to the former Soviet Union. We want to stay here and join the greater Jewish community and stand up against hatred. There should not be any reason why we cannot give back and say to everyone, elected officials, our people, that we are Am Israel, we are one. Bukharians who originally come from Persia, we're going to read about it. And we're going to tell all the Hamans of the world, we are not spread out, we are one. And we will come together against the hatred that is coming. So again, thank you for everybody to making us and to accept us to our community and from all the Bukharian Jews, our new home here in Queens, I like to call it Queens, Pakistan, or Rigostan, that we make it home. And thank you for all the people who came and to say we're going to stop hatred in all its fashion and all its time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And after and after, we're closing with the remarks of Rabbi Mendelssohn, as we said, in Forest Hills, and the chaplain in... Yeah, and the uh, chaplain in the hospital. Bro, hospital. raise up the flag, bro. Can you hear me in the back? Yes. Okay. My name raise is Rabbi up. Yossi Mendelssohn. I'm a rabbi in Ma Congregation Machana Chadash in Forest yeah. Hills, just a few blocks away from where we had the anti-Semitic chalk writing in the school, in this playground of the uh, public school. I'm also the chaplain at New York Presbyterian Queens, but I'm not authorized to speak on their behalf. Put on your shoulder, are you? Awesome. When I heard about a young boy arrested for the writing of hateful words, I was hurt when I heard that he was arrested, thanks certainly due to the pressure put on by our elected leaders. I want to say thank you to them, but that it does not go far enough. Because while we want, we must prosecute crimes to the full extent of the law, to prosecute and not educate, you might as well not prosecute. If you seek only to incapacitate and not rehabilitate, then the hate will only proliferate. It is our obligation as Jewish people, because I'm not speaking to anti-Semites now, thank God I'm speaking to my Jewish brothers and sisters and to those who stand with us against hate. It is our obligation to bring to bear the 2,000 years of experience that we have in experiencing oppression and hate and discrimination and to carry that legacy forward to be a light unto the nations and to serve as an inspiration 
If we do not carry that torch, if we do not serve as an inspiration about love in the face of hate, about positivity in the face of negativity and darkness, then for what did 2,000 years of our ancestors suffer? Of what good is it at all if we do not learn its lessons to stand as good people in the face of evil? And this means that when a 12-year-old boy is arrested and there is no plan for restorative justice, we must speak against it. This means that when young boys, different groups from different ethnic backgrounds are fighting and nearly killing each other in Forest Hills High School, and there is no plan to bring dialogue between these young men, there is no plan to have any kind of interaction between them, then we and everyone here who's speaking out against hate is not going far enough. We fail. So thank you everyone who came here today to speak out. And let's go out and speak out more, but speak out with education, positivity, and goodness. Happy Purim to all. Thank you, thank you everybody. Happy Purim to the president who allows me to do what I have to do. The bottom of the Cynthia, who put in hours and hours of work. This doesn't happen just like that. All the sponsoring our organizations, the Queen's Jewish Link, the ZOA, the Bukhara community, and the Vada Rabana. Most important message may have been delivered by Yaakov, by Yaakov Suro. Call those politicians. You heard Grace May refer to the numerous letters that she got. And she got, and they were pointed, they held her feet to the fire. We have to keep the politicians' feet to the fire. Call, write, demand, and maybe something will be done. Thank you. Have a good year and a good program. Hello. Yes. Hang on a second. I'm going to say to Hello there.